It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and right now we're going to be talking about COP28, and we're focusing on Nigeria's role at the COP28 Climate Change Conference. We are glad to have with us here Mr. Adeyemu Lawal, MD, Square Lines Limited, an environmental advocate. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning Thank sir. you for having me here. Uh, well, um, everybody's been talking about this COP28 as an opportunity mm -hmm. that Nigeria, and in, in fact the entire world, to seize this opportunity to address the issues that are bedeviling us as regards the climate change that mm -hmm. we're talking about. So <clears throat> why is it sounding so serious at this moment? Well, if we could sound more serious, it would have been better because we're really in dire need of changing our ways because the economy, the environment has changed so much because of us so we need to realize what we've done to the environment come to the round table and agree quickly on what we need to start doing in the opposite direction to what we've been doing so that we can stop the depletion in uh, in the ozone layer and stop the en environment the earth from warming up yeah. beyond what it needs to do the earth should warm up but if it's going at a faster rate than it should be because of us, then we need to do some other things to okay. push it in the other direction. Okay, mm. so what are these things that we're doing that are wrong? Oh, well, we're, our lifestyles, uh, our industries emit a lot of CO2 and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that warms up the air, uh, the atmosphere. And when this is done, we have droughts desertification and other uh, environmental issues that comes up and makes life difficult for us that started it in the first case mm -hmm. so we need to redress that one should we say industry should close down no we should just find better ways to impute in our processes what will not emit co2 into the atmosphere mm -hmm. at the rate that is emitting it so at least we can have a better world to live in Okay, so that takes me to Port Harcourt, because I know correct. there is um, gas flaring mm -hmm. in Port Harcourt, and mm -hmm. as a result of that, there is soot. Mm -hmm. So that's, I'm sure that is like one of the things that we're that's doing one of the things. wrongly. So mm -hmm. what can we do? What can companies and industries do to ensure that we're not going at a faster rate than we shouldn't be going? Now, we should check the processes for the production of fossil fuel, because that's the that's one of the biggest contributors of CO2 into the atmosphere. We need to also change in our own lifestyles to start depending more on renewable energy mm -hmm. as against fossil fuel energy. So if the more we do that, of course, those companies will have to diversify, go into something else, or find better ways to produce without emitting into the air. There's another option of even the CO2 produce, if they can be collected and used as source of I mean, uh, inputs in other industries to make other materials then instead of flying it into the atmosphere yeah. then those are one of the ways we could work on uh, okay, but improving uh, things cop 28 is in far away dubai what have you done about the people back home to educate them enough well, I, I say this because in the last national assembly someone brought up the issue of electric cars and some of the legislators actually said Nigeria being a producer of oil should never even talk about it. <laughs> so which means even the legislators need to be educated. So what That's have correct. you done locally before you carry this advocacy to the COP28? Well, I, I, I don't think it's something that we have to do first before going. We have to do it at the same time simultaneously. As we are going global because we need to discuss with other countries you cannot do it in isolation as a country we also need to educate our people from top down on the need to change our lifestyles because we all love this planet that we've been living on and we don't have another option to mm -hmm. even go to so, so as long as we don't have other options we have to find a way of making the place continue to be habitable for us so so if we have senators, if we have House of Rep members, if we have anybody in government that is yet to be as educated as possible, as required on this, then we need, that means we need to increase because they are the ones that are supposed to educate the people. Mm -hmm. So if they are having challenges with the, with the level of education, they need to be educated also because the truth is, whether you are aware 
or not, the, the climate is changing. Yeah. Whether you've observed it, whether you want to live in denial or not, it's changing. So we need to do what will reverse the rate of uh, uh, change in the environment. Can so, that be reversed? Oh, uh, well, the rate of increase can be reversed. Mm. Okay. The rate of increase. Not that it's not as if it will go back to. Go back to, mm. but we can work towards net zero. Net zero means the rate of emission and the rate at which you can capture the already existing cam uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere comes to the same. So you can say effectively you've not emitted because what you emitted you also captured. So, yeah. so yeah, but that's, that's, a, I, I that's a goal that the world is yet to reach yeah. because we are having a lot of uh, uh, talk yeah. but uh, yeah, actually, not yeah. yet backed up with sufficient action to to get what we need to get to. Yeah, because at the world stage, uh, it sounds to, it seems to be easy. Uh, you show your intellectual, intellectual prowess uh, by arguing for, and Nigeria will also go there. But I remember a time when Cross River Forest or so mm -hmm. was like one of the largest in mm -hmm. the world, and the world was focusing attention there because we need the trees yeah. to capture the carbon dioxide and emit the mm -hmm. oxygen and all that. But I didn't see any deliberate policy, anything that will make that forest not to be depleted. So I'm worried about we going to the world stage and saying what we need to say, and back home we're still doing what we are not supposed to do. It, it worries me that maybe we didn't tidy our home well before we went out. Well, uh, unlike in time past, in 2021, there was a legislation that was brought up by the government for climate change as a standalone legislation. In yeah. fact, Nigeria is the first in West Africa to do that. So that's where to start from because we need government to lead, giving guidelines, yeah. the policies on what to do and what not. They've, even part of the legislation is that companies that have 50 uh, employees and above will need to appoint a climate change officer that will give report at certain times. Now, what is left now, having done that, because that's where to start from, yeah. uh, guidelines and policies to direct where we, what is left is now the implementation of that policy, so that at least we can get the needed benefits from. We've set uh, NDCs, nationally determined contributions, looks nice and lofty, but if we don't start implementing, then they will just remain on paper where they don't need to be, they need to be in our lives. So, so that's what we need to do then. And the issue of uh, deforestation, what do we do? We need to reforest. Yeah. It's a simple. Plant more trees. Make it a thing of our life. Make, make it like almost compulsory that you must have trees in your house. Mm -hmm. There are trees that are indigenous to the area. Plant mm -hmm. those trees because they'll be able to sequester uh, CO2 from the atmosphere and keep them because we don't need them there they, if, they are, if they can be kept in But when you're planting and cutting at the same time it doesn't make any sense yeah. because now when you go to Boki for instance that's okay. where the, the forest in Cross River mm. is that stretch when you go there now people are cutting the trees to make a living mm. firewood mm -hmm. charcoal and then timber paper mm. the same thing. so yes mm. paper and all that so if there are no alternatives to these they will keep cutting the trees. If you plant one and you cut a tree that has been there for 50 years and you plant one, it will take another 50 years before it can grow to that point. So depletion will continue unless there are alternatives. How are you addressing with your advocacy those things that will serve as alternatives to the reasons why people are depleting the forest? Yeah, that, that's one of the reasons for rene rene uh, reusable, uh, renewable energy. energy. That's one of the reasons for it. So that at least as you are cutting and using what we've been used to, which is the fossil fuel mm -hmm. energy source, we can go into solar, wind, wind energy. There are different ways to get the required it's energy we're trying to get. Mm -hmm. So if we can get it from other sources and find ways of storing them, because part of the shortcomings of renewable energy is the uh, ability to store and have it consistently over a stretch of time so that you, you don't have power in the afternoon and in the night mm. when there is no sun, no power. But if you have uh, very good storage facilities, you can have that power round the clock. 
though you don't have sun around the mm -hmm. clock. So those are ways of doing. But you see, the first thing to do is to change the mindset of the people that yeah. this can be done. This can be done. And these are the steps we need to take. Yeah. So we need that higher heightened advocacy on the need to change our lifestyles in a way that our atmosphere and our climate and even the app that we so much love remains what it needs to be for us yes and so that we don't destroy where we're living yeah. because we don't have somewhere else to go to so i know that in in some countries there are companies that um, when you buy something from them, so they have these policies, when you buy something, they grow a tree, mm. you know, from whatever proceeds they make. Mm. Shouldn't that be one of the policies we should have mm. in Nigeria? That, okay, companies, it, it could be part of your um, CSR, mm. your corporate service responsibility, mm. um, corporate society responsibility, that, mm. you know, for every money you make, the same way you tap, you, you ask them to pay tax, you can also tell them, okay, they should be able to grow some trees with the proceeds that they get. Yeah, this, that's, that's part of the things that need to be done. It's a holistic approach. It's not, there's no one size fits all with what we need to do to work against the climate change. The companies will need to be also incentivized so, so that, you know, when you are doing the right thing, okay, you get carbon credits for what mm -hmm. you've done. You know, so and if you are planting trees, you get carbon credit. So, so we know, so it affects your uh, the payment of your tax. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so you are encouraging those that are on the right path and those that are yet to move on that path. Then you discourage them from going in the direction they used to go. So, yeah. so because it's it's not going to be uh, an easy tax, but it's something that can be achieved. So. We will we'll have to push for it. So I just, hope, the, the I just hope government remains at the policy level, level mm. uh, to make the, the place uh, comfortable for people to do what they actually need to do. Because we've seen one or two governors who said they voted billions of Naira for planting of trees. Mm. And we were just wondering, where did that money go to? You won't find the trees. <laughs> if you find the trees, maybe it's a thousand trees, and that is the end. Mm. So let them not use public funds to do what they say they are doing and are not, not doing, uh, by the way. But your challenges, there are challenges that some of these countries, some of these states, some of these people have advanced, mm -hmm. why they are not able to do what they are supposed to do at this moment, that you intend to address at the COP28. Mm -hmm. What are some of these? Well, the, the number one challenge is the lack of political will to do what it takes mm -hmm. for everybody. So, so that we go beyond just coming to the round table since 2015. We are now at COP28 uh, and just talking. Beyond the top, what do we do? Are you thinking of sanctions? Uh, well, if we have to, but I just don't want to use the word sanctions. Mm. If we have to so so it, so yes. not looking like it's uh, punitive yeah. and, you know, so, 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 but if we have to discourage you from going along the path then what do we need to do mm -hmm. but the moment you stop going along that path we need to encourage you also so that uh, you can see benefits in mm -hmm. not going along this path but going along this path so it, it has to be like a carrot and stick uh, <laughs> approach. Way, approach you know you 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 pat them in the back when they're doing the right thing when they're doing wrong I say, nah, I think you should do it a bit better than that. So, so for instance, uh, there are countries right now that in volcanic rocks, as bad as volcanoes are, they, they are able to sequester uh, CO2 yeah. and store it forever. So what they are doing is that they have like massive vacuum cleaners that yeah. will suck out the air, take out the CO2, release the good uh, oxygen, then take down that CO2 two kilometers deep into the ground. And the CO2 remains permanently sequestered in there. But the, at what rate can we do that? that is the biggest that I know of is can take 4,000 tons of CO2. Mm -hmm. But we are emitting 36,000, 36 billion tons per annum. So you see, mm -hmm. it's still... The yeah, margin is quite, is, yes. uh, so, But we, we are going in the right direction. So if we show this, and we, that company that did that, you give them cap, um, carbon credits for doing this, and, you know, benefits so that they can know that, okay, this is actually profitable. When you see more of them, another thing we need to do is to 
reuse items more as against producing new ones because the process of producing from scratch releases more CO2 than when you are just reusing what has been produced already. Yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's a whole lot of things. That the government needs to put policy guidelines in place with the people and institutions. We need to change our ways too. Okay, so I know you're an environmentalist. Do you have anything talking about plastic and waste and all of that, or is just solely on um, CO2 and the climate change? No, it's, it's holistic. Okay. It's holistic. If you drop waste in the, in, in the drains and uh, the plastics and the pet bottles end up in the seas yes, and kill the, the aquatic uh, uh, organisms mm -hmm. you've done out to the atmosphere. So we need to, that's part of what I said by changing our lifestyle. At the point of even generating the waste, sort your waste. Yes. Uh, put the pet bottles separately, put those that are degraded. Papers, yeah. Yeah, so, so at least. So we, of course, and there are uh, avenues of even being encouraged in that line. So if you can sort the pet bottles, you, at the point you have sufficient, you can weigh them, they mm -hmm. buy it off you, mm -hmm. so they can reuse them for some other things instead of throwing them in the drain and they end up in the oceans and cause trouble for our aquatic life. So it's, it's, it's holistic. It's not <laughs> one, one yeah. way approach. We have to approach everything at the same time because the, uh, the climate is changing and uh, we, get in this world. we are in this world <laughs> together. If we get beyond the two degrees increase by the end of the century, Wow. Okay, everybody has to do what they can, where they stand. So Nigeria has to do what it, it can, where it is. Mm. Uh, we're talking about the role of Nigeria in all of this mm -hmm. in climate change. What are those partic uh, peculiar challenges that Nigeria needs to address, you know, beyond going to COP28? I'm, I'm really concerned about that. Yeah. Well, we know we are beat our chest and say we are doing it in Nigeria, okay. so you copy as well. Okay. Well, the first thing Nigeria as a, as a body must do is what they've done to have policy. a, a policy. Policies in place. That's one. The next thing is now work on the implementation of that policy in an unbiased manner. Not that you mm. work, uh, you implement in certain ways here and not exactly the Who same way. Who are the vanguard of this working at the It still has to be the government in, a, in association with, in collaboration with so, uh, civil society and every stakeholder. Which is everybody. Yeah, which is, 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 yeah, <laughs> which is everybody, every representative. You know, for instance, the government formed a national council on climate change, and the president is the head. So that shows you that as a government, they are taking it seriously. Yeah. Even the, the head, vice president created an ad exactly an ad hoc committee on for those that are going, so that before we go to COP twenty eight, yeah. let us put our house in order. Yeah. What our agenda? What do we intend to get out from COP twenty eight? Not just to go. And no, the, just fill the seat fill and come the back. And come back. No. But what are the things that we want to bring back to the people that we got this and this and this and this for COP28? Cop, cop so that's a good step. But I will keep emphasizing the side of implementation. For instance, as I said the, uh, earlier, the, uh, if organizations have 50 and above, they will need to have a climate change officer. So the organization also needs to do that. Yeah. And we need to be sincere for other organizations that are non-government organizations. So, okay, all right, like Rotary and others. So they plant trees continually, every quarter, every month, every week, continue to do this. So you form uh, LCDs. What are we doing in our own area? Mm. Are we allowing people to dump waste anyhow in our own area? Or are we waiting for government to come from the state capital to come and clear our waste, our drains for us? We need, uh, everyone has to be on the same page for it. So, but we need the government leading from the front. That's, that's the critical point. Once they lead from the front, as they ought to, then it's easier to, let me not use the word easier, it will be less challenging mm. to follow. Mm -hmm. So how are you going about sensitization to? It's uh, being on programs like this, going to the communities, speaking to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, making them see the reason. You yeah, are not just saying, don't burn mm. wood again. 
you are giving them the reason not to. Yes. Okay, if you are saying I shouldn't do this again, what is the alternative? At least you are not going to tell me to to just sleep and not do anything because you said okay, I shouldn't cut trees again. What can I do if I'm not cutting trees again? So, so those are the things that we go into communities and go to several areas to educate the people on the need to change. Uh, funny so. question, funny mm -hmm. question. This officer that should be employed <laughs> uh, in every organization, who pays them? <laughs> well, the, that's part of the cost of... Uh, uh, Running your organization. Uh, organization. So if, I, will, if, I, if I have 50 staff and I'm struggling to pay, I will hire one more. No, 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 you don't have to hire one more. You just need to appoint Assign one, of them one of them as the climate change officer that will be reporting back to the government and to the Nat Na National Council on Climate okay. and Climate Change on what you are doing. It doesn't have to be uh, where you're going to employ okay. uh, a climate change officer. It doesn't have so to that be. person needs to be sure of all the policies. And, and be sincere mm. on what they are doing as an institution, as an organization, sure. because you need to report uh, so, so that the data you are getting. If they chose me from Plus TV, I now tell them that we are emitting so much gas into the <laughs> 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 The sincerity part is what I'm just... Yeah, but, but we need it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because you see, that's why I, I said initially that I will not use word Sanction, sanctions. Yeah. Mm. I would rather say let's discourage it because if you start using sanctions, sanctions, uh, you are throwing penalty words all over the place. People will just start walking around the mm. policies mm. and for loopholes around. So, so, but if we discourage it, we don't encourage you to continue. Mm. But, but when you do the right thing, you are you get benefits from mm. doing the right thing. So, so. Okay, yeah. I think that's where we have to leave <laughs> it. <laughs> it's, it's challenging, but we, we is, have to do it. it we is. have to do it because we love this world. Uh, we don't want to be without it. We yeah. can't even be without it. We don't have an option. So, yeah. so we should even the heaven it. we want to go to, nobody wants to die. Exactly. <laughs> but he doesn't but want, want to, to make it to heaven. <laughs> okay, we've been speaking with Mr. Uh, Deye Mulawal. He's been talking to us on the role of Nigeria at the COP28 climate change. And I hear that today is your birthday. Yeah. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, sir. Thank you, thank you so Happy much. birthday. We wish you many, many more years, a prosperous and fulfilling one. In a clean environment. Yes, yes in, in a very clean, clean environment. environment. That will be the best birthday. <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we wrap it up on the show this morning. It was great being with you. We hope to rejoin with you tomorrow for another edition. Until then, my name is Nyamgul Agadi. My name is Rume Paulson. Have a good day.